الله تعالى ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نجعل له عينين ولسانا وشفتين وهديناه النجدين صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام my dear respected brothers, elders, friends, and youngsters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, it is from the great mercy and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has allowed us to gather here today for a short time in order, to, in order to make His remembrance and in order to renew and refresh and rejuvenate our iman. Alhamdulillah. And if we were to try and count every single blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we were to try and quantify all the bounties and boons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us, we would not be able to do so. We would not be able to quantify them because from the moment we wake up in the morning until the moment we sleep at night, there's countless, countless blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us at every single moment. And many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us some blessing or He grants us something and we do not realize the full value of this blessing until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes this blessing away from us, until we no longer have this blessing. And on the other hand, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may grant us a certain blessing, and we may use this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way against the wishes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We may use the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us not to use it. Now one of the very great and very uh, important blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has granted to us is the blessing of this tongue, this tongue, this small piece of flesh, this ability to speak and to convey ourselves and to convey our feelings and our thoughts and our emotions to other people. This is a very great and a very, uh, a very powerful blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because through this ability to speak, to use this tongue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows a person to get very, very close to him. It allows a person to get very, very close to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It allows a person to, to build up uh, palaces and gardens and castles for himself in, in the gardens of Jannah, inshallah. But at the same time, this very same tongue this very same small piece of flesh, it has the ability to take a person very far away from the path of Allah, to take a person very far away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has a, a, the ability to incur very great loss for a person if it is not looked after very, very carefully. Now, regarding this tongue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Balad, at the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He starts the surah by saying, لا أقسم بهذا البلد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he swears, he takes an oath by the, the holy and sacred city of Makkah al-Mukarramah. And then Allah says, uh, Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he swears and he takes an oath by Adam alayhi salam and all the progeny of Adam alayhi salam. So now if we look at it, first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's taking an oath by the, by the holy city of Makkah al-Mukarramah, by the mother of all cities, and the mother of all dwellings, Makkah al-Mukarramah. Then right after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by Adam alayhi salam, or we could say by the father of all the dwellers of those cities. First Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by the dwellings, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by all the dwellers who live inside of those dwellings. Subhanallah, this is one of the great miracles of the Qur'an, this, this beauty of the Qur'an Allah has put in it. Nevertheless, what is the point of all this? The point of these, these oaths that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking is to show that there is some emphasis and there is some importance in the coming words. Allah wants us to focus a little more and put a little more attention when we're reading the following words. Now a few ayat later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, He poses a rhetorical question. He says, uh, regarding the insan, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنَ have we not granted insan, have we not granted this human being two eyes with which he sees, with which he looks around and with which he views the world? And obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has no need to ask anyone any question. This question is not that Allah is asking for information, no. Allah is alim and Allah is sami' and Allah is basir. Allah knows everything and he sees everything and he, he is well aware of every single thing at all times. He is posing this rhetorical question as a means for us to understand, as a means to, to make us wake up and to make us take heed of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, have we not granted insan, human beings, these two eyes with which he sees? And the answer is indeed, of course, yes, he has. And then Allah says, وَلِسَانًا وَشَفَتَيْنِ 
And have we not granted insan this tongue and these two lips with which he speaks and with which he conveys himself and with which he um, makes apparent the, the emotions and the feelings and the thoughts inside of himself? And once again, the answer is indeed, of course, Allah has made this the case. And then Allah says, first Allah tells us he has granted us this ability to speak. He has granted us this tongue. This, this tongue. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That we have guided mankind, we have, we have shown human beings two separate paths. We have guided him and shown him two separate paths. One is the path towards good, towards that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, towards that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. And the other path is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for us to refrain from, the path of evil, the, the path towards things which are harmful for us and harmful for others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us this ability to speak, not so that we can just go and say whatever we want, whenever we want, no. So that we can use this, this he, he, he has also granted us the ability to discern between right and wrong, to discern between what is good and what is bad, so that, so that we can use this tongue, we can use this, these lips and this tongue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in a proper way, in a productive way, in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in a way that is beneficial for us as well. Now, it's a very, this, this, as I said before, this blessing is a very great one and sometimes we take it for granted, this, this blessing of being able to speak. If we really think about it, it's an amazing blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when a person, from the moment a person is born and he comes into this world, until the moment he passes away, he has that same one tongue and he's continuously using it and using it and using it every single day of his life. A person says hundreds and thousands of words every single day. If we take another example, say I have a car and I drive this car every single day. Over time, if I use this car for years and years, five years, 10 years, even 20 years, eventually a point's going to come where that car begins to degrade. And then I have to take that car to the mechanic and I have to spend money on this car. And the, the longer I use it, the, the more it degrades over time until eventually, eventually a point comes where that car becomes completely useless to me. It's not able to run anymore at, what I, like, at all. Even if I throw all my money at it, even if I take it to the best mechanics, you can't do anything about it. That car is broken down completely. And... However, if we look at the tongue, this tongue Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we use it for 40 years, 50 years, 70 years. Some people live for over 100 years. They're using the same exact tongue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them over 100 years ago. They're still using that same tongue and it's still working perfectly fine. Subhanallah. This is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't realize the true bless, the true, how, how valuable this blessing is or how valuable any blessing really is until we lose that blessing or until we, we, we are deprived of that blessing. So there was a, a, a sheikh, a, um, a scholar, and his, one of his relatives underwent an operation. And this, this relative, he, he said that after this operation, he, he, there, there was a period of time where he, his body was completely numb. He could not move his body at all. He could not do anything. He could not um, feel anything at all. And most importantly, he could not even say anything. He could not speak. He could not express himself. So now, this, this person, he says that after the operation, he began to feel uh, thirsty. He began to get extremely, extremely thirsty. However, even though there was many people sitting around him, there's people right next to him, and he wishes so dearly that he could just ask them for one single glass of water, he's unable to do so. Because why? Because this tongue that he's been using for years and years and years until that point, suddenly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken that, that ability of speaking away from him for just a small amount of time. For about half an hour, he said he passed in this, in this state, in this situation. And he said that this half an hour that he spent in such extreme thirst, unable to ask for a single glass of water, he had not felt such hardship and such difficulty as that ever before in the entirety of his life. So now hopefully from this we can understand and get some idea of how great a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this, this, this tongue really is. And we can, um, this, this blessing Allah has given us, He's given it to us for free. It's not that we've, we've, we've paid some money to get this. We haven't paid a single penny for this blessing of Allah. Now because Allah has given it this to us for free, when somebody does a favor for you, we naturally inside of us we want to... Uh, be thankful to that person. We want to show some gratitude to that person. We want to do something for that person. So now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this great bounty of being able to speak and convey ourselves and, and express ourselves, how do we show thankfulness to Allah for this? 
We show thankfulness to Allah for this tongue by using this tongue in the way He wants us to use it. By using this tongue in, in righteous ways, in ways that will help us and will benefit us. So there's many ways we can go about this. One very simple and very obvious way, we can keep our tongues engaged in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes in hadith, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, it's a very famous hadith. Kalimatani khafifatani ala lisan. ثَقِيلَتَانِ فِي الْمِيزَانِ حَبِيبَتَانِ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ وَبِحَمْدِهِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ that there are two such words, two such phrases that are very, very light on the tongue. They're very easy to say. They're very small and simple phrases, but they are very heavy on the scale of deeds, on the day of judgment when our deeds will be weighed against each other. This, these two phrases are very heavy on the, on the scale of good deeds. And حَبِيبَتَانِ إِلَى الرَّحْمَانِ They are very, very beloved to Ar rahman to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what are these two phrases? Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al-azim. These are two very short and very small phrases. So we should try our best to learn them and, and, and read them as much as possible. Now, and there, there are many other ways that we can use our tongues in good as well. We can recite the Qur'an, we can uh, learn the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can teach the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we can... Um, we can say some, some nice words or some comforting words to another Muslim brother. And this is another very, very easy way to, to use this tongue wisely. Rasul told us himself, he says, Afshu salam, spread salam amongst yourselves, spread salam amongst the community. And this is something that sometimes it feels difficult for us or it feels strange for us or it feels like it's, it's a burden upon us. But it should not be like that. You know, we're, we're, we're very used to making salam with our own family members or with our own friends or with our own relatives, with the people we hang out with. But it should not be that we only limit ourselves to that group of people. Because Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not say to limit ourselves to just that much. He said it in a very broad and a very general way. He said to spread salam to everyone across the entire community. So we should try our best to, to, to bring this, this action of making salam with everyone back into our lives and revive this sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And perhaps we can um, make this promise with ourselves or we can try that before we leave today, we make salam with at least one person who we usually don't make salam with. And inshallah, Allah will make it easier for us to revive this sunnah and, and, and we can try to make this a habit in our lives as well. Now, not only should we use our tongue in things which are good, but we should also refrain from using our tongues in things which are bad or things which are, are, are evil or things which are useless for us, things which have no benefit for us, things which do not help us in this world or the hereafter. It comes in hadith, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man kana yu'minu billah wal yawm al -akhir, A person who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the last day, the day of judgment, which is to say a person who is a believer, a person who is a Muslim, a person who is a mu'min, which is to say every single one of us sinning over here, um, he should either say good, he should either speak good, he should speak with kind and caring and compassionate words, or he should remain silent. If we, have, if, if we are going to say something which is, which is bad, it's better for us to remain silent and to not say anything at all than it is for us to say something which we may regret later, or to say something which does not give us any benefit whatsoever. Nowadays, this is something very easy for us to fall in, that we, we, we're, doing, we're, we're engaging in idle chatter, or we're just speaking amongst ourselves about useless topics, and we keep on chattering, and we keep on conversing between ourselves, but then after the conversation is over, we have no idea what we spoke of because they were useless and, and baseless topics. So we should try to refrain from, from, from these useless topics because one of the greatest pieces of advice for protecting our tongues is to try and use our tongues as little as we can, to speak as little as we can, or at the very least, not to speak all the time with, without any reason. Because the more we use this tongue, the more we run this tongue, the, 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 the greater the chances are that we may, we may slip up and this tongue may cause us to say something that we may regret later. This tongue may cause us to say something which may break the heart of another Muslim brother. And it's, it's very easy nowadays to fall into all these different vices and sins of the tongue, like backbiting and slandering and, and carrying tales and what have you. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all of these vices and all of these sins. Now I'd like, I'd like to just end off on this one final note. Imam Shafi rahimahullah, he mentions in, in one of his poems regarding the safeguarding the tongue. He says, احفظ لسانك أيها الإنسان لا يلدغنك إنه ثعبان كم في المقارب من, من, من قتيل لسانه كان التهاب لقاءه القران so, subhanAllah, what does he say? <coughs> Excuse me. Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, he says that, he says, 
احفظ لسانك أيها الإنسان. He says that, O oh mankind, O oh insan, O oh human beings, protect and safeguard your tongues. Be wary over your tongues. Why? لا يلدغنك إنه ثعبان. That it protect your tongues and safeguard your tongues so that it may not sting you and it may not cause harm to you. Because indeed, إنه ثعبان. It is like a great serpent. It is like a great snake. It may cause you very great harm before you even realize. And then he says, "Kam fil maqari bi min qatili lisanihi." That there are many such people in this, in, who who have whose tongues have taken them into their graves, whose tongues have brought them into the punishment in their graves. And about these people, he says, "Kanat tahabu liqa'ahu al-aqranu." That these people who are now in their graves, when they were still alive, that person's peers, the people who used to live around that person, they used to fear that person, and they used to live in awe, and they used to live in terror of that person. But now that person, because of the misuse of his tongue, because he did not safeguard his tongue as it ought to have been safeguarded, now in, in the grave he is facing the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is having a very difficult time in, in, in the, the punishment of his grave. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from the punishment of the grave. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to protect our tongues and use them in productive ways and in ways that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite us all once again in the gardens of Jannatul Firdaus. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah. الحمد لله الذي أحاط بكل شيء علما وهو على كل شيء شهيد أحاط علمه بالظاهر والخفي والقريب والبعيد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد فهو الولي الحميد وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله وعبده أفضل العبيد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم في هديهم الرشيد وسلم تسليما أما بعد فيا أيها الناس اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى واحفظوا ألسنتكم فإن حصائد اللسان هلاك الإنسان فعن معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه قال قلت يا رسول الله أخبرني بعمل يدخل الجنة أو يباعدني من النار قال لقد سألت عن عظيم وإنه ليصير على من يسره الله عليه تعبد الله لا تشرك به شيئا وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت ثم قال ألا أدلك على أبواب الخير الصوم جنة والصدقة تطفئ الخطايا كما يطفئ الماء النار وصلاة الرجل في جوف الليل يعني تطفئ الخطية كما يطفئ الماء النار ثم تلا تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع حتى بلغ يعملون ثم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا أخبرك بعأس الأمر وعموده وذرة سنامه قلت بلى يا رسول الله قال رأس الأمر الإسلام وعموده الصلاة وذرة سنامه الجهاد في سبيل الله ثم قال صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا أخبرك بملاك ذلك كله قلت بلى يا رسول الله فأخذ بلساني وقال كف عليك هذا قلت يا رسول الله وإنا لمؤاخذون بما نتكلم به فقال سكلتك أمك يا معاذ وهل يكب الناس في النار على وجوههم أو قال على مناخرهم إلا حصائد ألسنتهم أيها الناس إن حصائد اللسان هي أقواله المحرمة وهي أنواع كثيرة منها ما يوصل إلى الكفر ومنها دون ذلك فالاستهزاء بالله ودينه وكتابه ورسله وآياته وعباده الصالحين فيما فعلوا من عبادة ربهم كل هذا كفر بالله ومخرج عن الإيمان وهو من حصائد الشيطان والكذب والغيبة والنميمة والفحش والسب واللعن والقذف كل هذا من حصائد اللسان وفي الحديث إن الله لا يبغض الفاحش البذي أيها الناس لقد شاع في كثير من الناس أخلاق سيئة من حصائد اللسان فكثير من الناس لا يبانون بالكذب ولا يهتم يهتمون به ولم يحذروا من قول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الكذب يهدي إلى الفجور وإن الفجور يهدي إلى النار ولا يزال الرجل يكذب ويتحرى الكذب حتى يكتب عند الله كذابا كثير من الناس يظنون ظنونا كاذبا فيشعها في الناس من غير مبالاة بها هؤلاء الذين ينقلون للناس ما يفكرون به من أوهام لا حقيقة لها 
ربما يكون في كلامهم إلقاء للعداوة والبغضاء بين المسلمين فيتفكك المجتمع وتتفرق الجماعة من أجل أمور وهمية وظنون كاذبة كثير من الناس ينقلون الكلام عنه غيرهم بمجرد الإشاعات وربما لو بحثت عن هذا النقل لوجدته كذبا لا أصل له أو محرفا أو مزيدا أو منقوصا والمؤمن العاقل هو الذي يتثبت في الأخبار ويتحري في نقلها حتى لا ينقل إثما ولا كذبا وفي الحديث عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال كفى بالمرء إثما وفي رواية كذبا أن يحدث بكل ما سمع فيا أيها المسلمون احفظوا ألسنتكم لا تطلقوا عنانها فتهلككم إذا رأتم الكلام في شيء فتذكروا قول الله تعالى ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيد وقوله عليه الصلاة والسلام من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فليقل خيرا أو ليصمت واعلموا أنكم محاسبون على كل كلمة تخرج من أفواهكم وما فما جوابكم يوم القيامة إذا سئلتم ألم تتكلم بكذا وكذا فمن أين وجدت ذلك وكيف تكلمت ولم تتبين الأمر أيها المسلم لا تطلق لسانك بالقول لمجرد ظن توحمته أو خبر سمعته فلعل أن يكون ظنك كاذبا ولعل الخبر أن يكون كاذبا وحينئذ تكون خاصرا خائبا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى سبحانه ومخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات خصوصا على أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى سيدة النساء أهل الجنة فاطمة الزهراء رضي الله تعالى عنها وعلى سيدة شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين رضي الله تعالى عنهما وعلى الستة الباقية من العشرة المبشرة وعلى أمهات المؤمنين وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر الإسلام والمسلمين وأخذ من خذل الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل بلاد الإسلام آمنة مطمئنة من كل البليات والآفات ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني يذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون بھئی آ جائے جلدی سے آگے آ جائے لوگ باہر کڑے ہیں تو جگہ پور کر لیجئے بھائی برام دے بھی بھی حولوں میں بھی جو لوگ ہیں وہ جلدی سے آ جائے اندر یہاں یہ کورنر میں کافی جگہ ہے آ جاؤ أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد 
حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير قالت الأعراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولما يدخل الإيمان في قلوبكم وإن تطيعوا الله ورسوله لا يلدكم من أعمالكم شيئا إن الله غفور رحيم إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا وجاهدوا بأموالهم وأن فسهم في سبيل الله أولئك هم الصادقون الله أكبر سبحان الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان الله الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الله الله أكبر 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل أتعلمون الله بدينكم والله يعلم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض والله بكل شيء عليم يمنون عليك أن أسلموا قل لا تمنوا علي إسلامكم بل الله يمن عليكم أن هداكم للإيمان إن كنتم صادقين إن الله يعلم غيب السماوات والأرض والله بصير بما تعملون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر سبحان الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وعملا صالحا وإيمانا مستقيما وفضلا دائما وشفاء من كل داء اللهم اشفنا واشف مرضى المسلمين 
اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولاساتذتنا ولمشايخنا ولاقاربنا ولاصدقائنا ولمن اوصانا بالدعاء ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتوب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد واله واصحابه اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين